My name is Debbie Schachter. I am the University Librarian at Capilano University in North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I'm also a member of the OCLC Global Council, having served as the Chair of Global Council and Chair of the Americas Regional Council. I'm happy to be here with you all, all today uh, to act as the moderator and to share in this important discussion on global sustainability and libraries. We want to have a conversation, uh, we want to have our conversations on a global scale. So let's begin today's session by seeing where you are joining us from. We will be using Poll Everywhere for today's live polling. So please have an alternate uh, internet browser available if you'd like to participate. We will also make the link available in chat. So the, you can let us know where you're joining us from today via the poll or by chat. We'll just see where people are coming from. So go ahead and respond to the poll everywhere and we see a few green dots showing up on our uh, live display which is great and if you have a problem with the uh, link please put your location from uh, into the chat I see Asia Pacific I see Australia we have some North America, we've got Canada and United States and Europe. And someone's coming in from Arkansas <laughs> via the chat. Okay, thank you very much. Let's begin on the session and thank you again for joining us. So like our attendees today, OCLC Global Council is a 48-member group comprising of li library leaders from across the globe. These library leaders are elected to serve and represent OCLC member library interests. T together, Global Council delegates work to generate insights that help inform OCLC strategic directions and advance libraries globally. We advance shared knowledge through thought leadership and collaborative conversations with each other and with members throughout the world. And we promote our shared library values through global cooperation and active participation in the OCLC Cooperative. Each year, the Global Council selects an area of focus. This year, we've selected the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, as we like to say for short. Over the next year, we will focus our activities on learning more about how libraries are using the SDGs to help improve their communities. For those who may not be aware, in 2015, the United Nations member states adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This UN agenda includes 17 sustainable development goals, all supported by the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, or IFLA, through its International Advocacy Program. The goals can serve as a roadmap for our libraries to help address global challenges, such as poverty, inequality, climate change, and quality education. With all of this in mind, we're very excited and honored to introduce Barbara Lisson. Barbara Lisson is Director of the Bremen, Bremen Public Library in Bremen, Germany, and CEO of the Public Enterprise Bremen Public Library. She's also the current President-elect of IFLA, set to begin her term as IFLA President this coming August and has served as trustee on the OCLC board since 2012. It's no surprise that Barbara's leadership among libraries in Germany and around the globe is well recognized. She has served as the president of Bibliothek Informa Information Deutschland, 
the National Umbrella Organization of German Library and Information Association, <coughs> and was the chair of the German Library Association, DBV. Additionally, she has held many leadership positions in the European Bureau for Libraries, Archives, and Documentations Associations, including executive committee member and vice president. We are very pleased to have Barbara join us today to share some of her insights on the Sustainable Development Goals from the IFSL perspective and to kick off this first event in our five-part webinar series, Exploring Library Strategies, Impacts, and Contributions to These Important Global Goals. Barbara, over to you. Thank you very much, Debbie. <laughs> and thank you very much for the introduction. I'm always <laughs> listening what I've always have been done or still am doing, that's interesting to know. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you very much for the invitation to um, show you what IFLA and how IFLA is helping the libraries and supporting the libraries, especially uh, on the field of advocacy, to um, show what they are doing and they have been doing already. I would like to start in 2014. You said, uh, Debbie, that 2015, the Sustainable Development Goals by the UN were confirmed or taken, and uh, IFLA has taken action before that already. So um, 2014 was the IFLA Congress in Lyon in France, and there was um, published the Lyon Declaration on Access to Information and Development a document which, uh, from my point of view, still is very valuable uh, with regard to the important um, impact of libraries in the development uh, of, the set of the states, of the nations, of societies. So it is an initial groundwork document which was then used to enter the United Nations and show them how important libraries uh, are in that field. And um, I stress the last paragraph, I want to just cite this. We therefore call upon the member states of the United Nations to make an international commitment to use the post-2015 development agenda to ensure that everyone has access to and is able to understand, use, and share the information that is necessary to promote sustainable development and democratic societies. You see, no words about libraries, but the main, the buzzword, the key word is the word um, information, access to information. So you just have seen, well, I, can we, how do I move the, ah. You just have seen, Debbie showed you already, the wonderful colors of the sustainable development goals. and. Um, how do I change this? Yes. Um, IFLA took action, and out of the Sustainable Development Goals, there came out the IAP, the International Advocacy Program of IFLA. So IFLA started advocacy and um, showed to, to try to show what libraries are doing already and can do for the Sustainable Development Goals. And I have problems to change the slides. Yeah, that's the next slide. So um, IFLA worked a lot to get into the UN. Perhaps you can imagine how it is if an, even an international organization like IFLA wants to enter the discussion field, the deliberations of the United Nations and bring in the libraries and the ideas uh, oh, I just say next. Okay, I will say next. Thank you. <laughs> and bringing the ideas um, uh, about the library's important role in this context. So um, the mo most important thing, as I just said, is that we want to show to the politicians who decide about uh, what will be in the agenda that the libraries ensure access to information that they also safeguard the cultural heritage, that they are supporters and enhancers of general literacy, and of course that information and technology is something which libraries also promote um, and help the societies to 
engage with them. Next, please. So what is the rationale what IFLA took? Um, so we say information is absolutely needed when you want to comply with the sustainable develop development goals and want to achieve these goals. Because without information, no, no knowledge about civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Without information, you don't learn new skills. Without information, you cannot make safe decision, decisions and are part of the civil uh, society which we are so urgently needing. And without information, no community-based solutions for the challenges which are surrounding us can be taken. Of course, information, transparent information, good information, we have known, we all know the, the story about the fake news, um, help, help for good governance and empower the people as well. And of course, public and private commitments in the field of development goals are, this is the most important thing, but if there are public and private commitments, those people who do them, they need information. Next, please. And here you see something which wrote history for IFLA. You see the former president of IFLA, Donna Schieder, an American having worked in the um, in, the, in, the, in the library of um, the, uh, the, 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 so sorry, <laughs> Donna Shida. She was the president uh, until 2015, and she was in the UN. You see her here on the picture in the big hall of the UN, talking about the help of libraries and the support of libraries and this action of libraries to to achieve the sustainable development goals. So this, of course, this picture and this whole event was a highlight of the activities by IFLA. Next, please. And we have seen that there are 17 goals and the main goals, uh, the main goal IFLA focused on was goal 16. And without all the activities of IFLA, I think goal 16 might have looked different. You see, goal 16 is promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. By the way, all these 17 goals have sub-goals, and you see here the main sub-goal for libraries, it's 1610. Ensure public access for information and protect fundamental freedoms in accordance with national and international agreements. What else could libraries do? This is the most important thing for the libraries in these, six, in these 17 development goals. So please keep in mind, if you are asked why libraries and SDGs, keep in mind and say 1610. That's it. Next, please. How can we ensure, um, and another, another click please, how can we ensure that uh, we know how libraries work? And here you see that there are, of course, for every goal, there are indicators which show whether the goals have been achieved or are in the process of being achieved. And the goal for 1610, which I just read, one of the proposed indicators is existence and implementation of a national law and or constitutional guarantee on the right to information. Again, this is the basis for the existence of libraries. This is the political basis for the existence of libraries. So you can see how IFLA was able to bring in the main issue of library work, that is the access to information. That was not easy, I tell you, and uh, it took a lot of work uh, from headquarters, from the then governing board, from the secretary generals, which were there. And next, please, then you can see what IFLA also did. They did not only enter the United Nations, but they also tried to um, uh, to enter the libraries with that idea because at the beginning, of course, many libraries 
did not know, I think in every country, did not know what is these, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And IFLA made a lot, took a lot of efforts and took a lot of measures to show what libraries or the relationship between libraries and the Sustainable Development Goals. You can see impressive figures here, like um, 20, almost 21,000 librarians were reached with the trainings and meetings which IFLA um, in, it took in effect for the last years. Um, there was um, 49 meetings within the United Nations and with representatives of the United Nations. You could see that there are 24 projects funded by IFLA to raise the awareness because Awareness is a very important word in this context. You see, I didn't know about these sustainable development goals before, let's say, 2012. And now I'm talking for you with you about this. And therefore, awareness, knowing what that is, and find the bridge to the library's work, that is important. So next, please. IFLA takes action. And of course, we want that many, as many librarians as possible are aware that their work is an important contribution to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. And there is different, of course, different measures and different uh, instruments and tools how librarians can and should um, get the awareness and then promote this and use these sustainable development goals and their impact on it as an advocacy tool to show the importance of libraries. You can see here one a brochure. You can download this brochure in many languages, access and opportunity for all, how libraries contribute to the United Nations 2030 agenda. Very important. And I show you some examples out of that brochure. Next, please. So goal, goal number four is a goal which is so clearly connected with the libraries. Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. You see, um, here there are different examples from different countries. For instance, from the Netherlands, you see that's the first example. That in the Netherlands, through the help of libraries, newly born children get with their parents get uh, books and for the, for the parents library training and there is a lot of money going into it from the libraries and also from the government of the Netherlands. There is an example of Sweden, Singapore and so on. Next please, goal five, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Very important. So. Of course, we librarians know how we achieve that, but to tell other people like the politicians or the decision makers which give us the money for the libraries, that this is also a work and an impact of libraries. Like for instance, we see in Uganda, ICT training programs designed for female farmers through the libraries. Who would have known this? And of course, promote this in Uganda or in other countries where this is an important issue. Next, please. The goal six, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Well, people might say, and the libraries, why are the libraries there? Or ensure, and, uh, ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all, goal number seven. And of course, it might be very basic. The first uh, example from Honduras shows that the public library is the one who cares for safe water supply in a village. This is also very important because the awareness of the librarian obviously there helps this. And with his institution, he can do this. Next, please. And of course, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. How many public libraries or other libraries, academic as well, within a city are a focal point in inner city situations, in the inner city environment? 
So where is the, the library is an icon sometimes in many cities. So of course, uh, the library contributes uh, enormously to the well-being of the cities, of the towns as well. And of course, you see cultural heritage is also an issue for librarians, for libraries, you know this very well. And cultural heritage, of course, cared for by the libraries, it also creates creates identification and um, uh, inclusiveness that people understand through the cultural heritage where they come from and where they belong to. Next, please. IFLA takes action, as you see, all, all these slides uh, are nominated IFLA takes action. And many of the developments, many of the activities which IFLA has taken is now um, always promoted through um, a abbreviation which is called DA to I. That is, of course, um, development and access to information. And then there are the reports which IFLA brings out about the successes and about um, the ideas uh, how libraries can contribute this. Uh, the last one, the last report came out in 2019 and due to, due to the pandemic, of course, there was not as much done as IFLA would have liked to, of course. Next one, please. So what is meaningful access to information in the context of the UN agenda? You see here the main questions um, and the libraries have the answers. Not of course only the libraries, but surely the libraries. And with these answers, they can contribute to um, access to information, to build transparency and accountability in government, to improve gender equality, to increase the social and economic participation of youth, and to promote civic life in the communities. I mean, what else do we do than comply with these uh, goals for achievement? Next, please. What are the pillars of meaningful access to information? And you see, of course, the pillars are, um, the, 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 the goals are, to have skills to create and share information, to have a meaningful way to use information, a meaningful way, just not use it. And there you see all the goals, uh, all the pillars, which also are the pillars for the libraries, connectivity, social context, and the equality, the skills are very important, and the legal context, of course, is very important too. Next, please. And now again, how do we measure all these achievements? That is a big, big um, problem, of course, because the indicators might, might differ from one country to the other. Uh, there is a lack of critical data. We just go to the data in one of the next slides. And of course, the different levels of general and regional um, uh, point of view are there, the, the differences are very difficult. But you have seen one indicator, I just recited. So um, one indicator for 1610 for our goal is the ex existence or implementation of a national law and or constitutional guarantee on the right to information. This is one of the crucial indicators, of course, which we have to refer to and we shall refer to. So now, Look, we have the last slides are a looking of critical data. Next, please. Maybe you have seen this already. This is IFLA's library map of the world with so many information about the libraries in the world from different countries. There are so many interesting information points there. You can see all them um, and uh, they are filled by the library associations of the nations, of the states, sometimes of regions. And it is so important that we have these data. Um, there were no data, there were no global data for libraries before IFLA took the action and put up that library map of the world. You can see just the, the country, country data uh, on the left side bottom. United States of America, you can see, you can scroll, you can 
You can find a lot of information about your country and about other countries as well for comparison, for, for instance. Next one. And you see up there, there you find SDG stories. So the Sustainable De Development Goals are an important part of this library map of the world, which shows in which country which um, best examples of sustainable development goals achievements and support of the libraries by the libraries uh, is there. I brought you, I'm German, I brought you an example from Germany. Um, so there is Dialogues for Integration. The Hamburg Public Libraries helps refugees to find their way. And then you can see which SDGs are achieved by this. It's not a project, it's a program which is ongoing for um, to help the uh, refugees who came into Germany since 2015 uh, to uh, find their place in the German society, to learn the language, to learn the cultural uh, environment and so on. So um, everyone who has a very good um, uh, best practice maybe um, program or project, just try, go to that library map of the world and find out, it's not that easy, but you can do it, I'm sure. Find out how you can bring in your special um, best practice example for your country. Next, please. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. So. Um, be active and um, be aware of how we can really promote ourselves and do good for society and for the development of the nations. Thank you very much. Thank you for that clear and thorough or overview of the development of these goals and action items, Barbara. The OCLC Global Council is excited to be sharing in the journey of the Sustainable Development Goals with libraries all over the world and with respected organizations such as IFLA. Before we move to today's panel discussion, we would like to ask our attendees, which of the goals shown on the screen do you feel are most important to focus on? As a reminder, the polling link will be made available in the chat. We should see the polling seems to be working. So we'll give you a moment to enter. At this point, quality education is the majority, but we are seeing fluctuations related to reducing inequalities as the next most important in people's polls and peace, justice, and strong institutions of the third. And I think they're starting to equalize to a certain degree. Okay, well, I think that's where they're going to end up. Our last two are the partnerships and the um, decent work and economic work. So thank you for participating. Now let's transition to our panel. We'll begin today's panel by having our panelists introduce themselves. Let's begin with Peter Braid. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening, as always, the OCLC Global Council says. My name is Peter Bay. I'm working at the Princeton University Library as Associate University Librarian for Scholarly Collection Services. And also I am a member of the American, American Regional Council and also uh, I'm happy to see Barbara here. I'm also a member of the IFLA Document Delivery and Resource Sharing Standing Committee. Thank you, Peter. Let's go Thank now you. to Rocky Ralabipi Samila. Over to you, Rocky. Mediate for my National Librarian of South Africa. And I'm uh, currently a professor in the higher education science technology sector where I'm working on specifically SDG4, provision of national quality standards 
for university level qualifications, including library and information sciences qualifications. Um, and this is in line with uh, our National Development Plan 2030. I'm also a member of the EMEA Regional Executive Council. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rocky. And now to Constance Liebrand. Constance. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm speaking to you from the traditional lands of the Wajak Noongar people in Western Australia. Um, it's midnight here, so I'm really happy to be awake still and talking to you. I'm university librarian at Edith Cowan University here in Perth and um, uh, the currently chair of the Asia Pacific Regional Council. Thanks. Thank you, Carson. So next, we will be having our questions for the panel. For our first question, let's hear from our panelists on how you think the SDGs and this framework for addressing environmental, economic, and social equity issues can be used by libraries to help inform their strategies. Did you have any reactions to the poll? What were your choices? And we'll start with Peter. So over to you, Peter, and then we will ask our other panel members. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't know how others thought about this old SDGs, but you know, when I read it several years ago, first time, initially I thought, well, this is one of those abstract goals that the UN has set up. But you know, reading it through, I found that hmm, this is what we are doing every day. You know, our life, in, especially in our work of, in line of work in the library, we do a lot of these things already, even before UN announced it. And my choice for the question was actually uh, one of the bottom ones, a partnership for the goals is my first choice. Especially now we are in, you know, in this connected world, and especially that we are meeting uh, through the OCLC Global Councils. And we have set up uh, this partnership. Libraries, in a way, a perfect place to provide a chance, an occasion that people can make the partnership. Our law, as you, we said earlier, we are providing the information, but also while providing the information, we are connecting people who, who received the information and who created the information. So we are making connections between the people and also we are creating the partnership. Meanwhile, as OCFC, as you can see from the participants list, we have all, almost 400 people from all around the world. We already have a good partnership created. So this goal with our partnership, I think could play an important role to you know to reach the SDGs, and you may not aware, but OCFC has a good resource sharing network, which handles almost 5.5 million transactions a year. But we are already creating a partnership in which we share the information. So my reaction to the SDGs are: Hey, this is what we are doing always, but let's use it because the UN says so. Now we can use it to promote more our laws to the constituencies or those who will fund us. So this is what UN said, and this is what LIVE is always doing it. So you should support us. That's my message to my administrators to who fund the library will be like that. Okay, this is it. Thank you, Peter. Let's go to Rocky and, and see what Rocky has to say with respect to the same question. The SDGs are important and critical vehicles for development of any nation. If I were to choose two extremely important ones for libraries, uh, I don't differ very much from Peter. I looked at those that are closest to the traditional work of libraries or how libraries function because it's much easier to start with something that you have 
rather than start something completely, completely new. Um, so I will go with the SDG for quality education. This lends itself to the work that libraries are already doing. I mean, they, we have always done this even outside of the SDGs. Again, SDG 17, Partnerships for the Goals. Historically, this has been the bedrock of collaborative initiatives in the you know, library and information uh, service. So we know as librarians that no library has ever succeeded in going it alone. So that is my short um, response to this. And uh, I believe that, um, you know, librarians everywhere, whether they call it SDGs or whatever work they do, they know that they need to work with others, they need to partner. And also, quality education is really the bedrock of what they do. Thank you very much. That's where I'm going to stop it. Well, thank you very much, Rocky. Um, and we'll hear from Constance next for the same question. Over to you, Con. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank Barbara for that really amazing introduction uh, to the Sustainable Development Goals and confess that I had no idea how they were developed. And uh, I was only very vaguely aware of IFLA's role in, in, the, in sort of putting libraries to the forefront there. So thank you, Barbara, for, for sharing that information. I'm, I'm taking a wild guess, but I'm sure I'm not the only one here who maybe didn't know so much about it. Um, and I was really quite um, taken by uh, the mention of uh, the goal, goal 16 um, uh, and, and looking at, you know, peace, justice and strong institutions and that really important underpinning of access to knowledge and information, um, which uh, I agree I agree with my other two panelists about um, quality education as a really important part of what libraries do. I also agree about um, um, partnerships, but uh, at the bedrock of it, I guess, what we do and what we try and achieve is that access to information always. And you know it is it is increasingly challenging nowadays. Um, we talk about um, uh, access access to information, uh, copyright reform. Uh, we talk about fake news and the, the really terrible impact on on our democracies and and on people's lives. And I think libraries will have a really strong role to play in that, and will continue to do that. And I think. Um, yeah, I think the goals really help us to visualize and articulate what we need to do, what we're already doing, and what we need to continue to do. So they're, they're very important for us, I think. That's all I will say on that for now. Thanks. Thank you, Colin. Um, and so I, I'll, our panelists identified different goals primarily, but um, I think what's really arisen from that conversation was a little bit about the interconnected nature of the goals and how we are looking at having to address many goals in order to be successful. So thank you very much for that first question. Our next question, when thinking about library impact, how have the SDGs impacted your own library strategies, service delivery, or program offerings? Are some of your library's latest developments aligned with the SDGs? And again, um, these may or may or not, not be fairly new to your library, so I'm sure we'll hear a variety of uh, responses. So let's hear from Constance first. Over to you, Constance. Thanks, Debbie. Um, I have to confess again, uh, it's a bit of a confession session for me. We don't really, we've not really thought much about the, the sustainable development goals at my library, um, but you know, on reading about them and thinking about them and uh, in in the national discussion that's happened in Australia, um, I do know that a lot of the work we do aligns very closely with um, you know, what the goals are trying to achieve. And I think one of the challenges I have as, as the director of my library is to see how I can articulate um, and align our programs and services a bit more closely so that 
I think we get that broader breadth of impact. You know, it shows our impact in a much more, um, in a bigger way than, than our very narrow library view sometimes, if we can show we are contributing to this bigger picture. So, yeah, my answer is not, not as much as I would like at the moment, but this has really given um, uh, a bit of a, uh, an impetus to me to, to do more in this space. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Rocky, we'll go to you next to hear about your response to this question. Thank you very much, uh, Debbie. Um, let me just say that being in South Africa and being part of the AFLIA community, AFLIA is the network of uh, African libraries and institutions. We have been very busy with the SDGs since, you know, I would say from 2012. And we were at in Lyon in uh, 2014 and signed the Lyon Declaration. And with South Africa in particular, I remember that our minister, our deputy minister of um, arts and culture uh, accompanied us. We convinced her to come with us so he, she could actually see how libraries were dealing with SDGs and how they were really a, a, you know, a critical partner in the development agenda. And I think that gave us a huge opportunity to flourish as libraries and uh, we aligned our strategies with the National Development Plan. Um, let me just say that currently in South Africa and the Afia community, if any library program is not aligned with any of the 17 SDGs, chances, chances are that it cannot be funded by government. For South Africa in particular, SDGs, I'd like to say we're a godsend. <laughs> in rebuilding the country after the devastation of apartheid, we needed a strategic roadmap to the kind of transformation that would bring healing, inclusiveness, economic development, and a better life for all. Libraries identified their role very early in the game, and thanks to the IFLA leadership, that spelled out the goal for libraries to focus on the SDG 1610, uh, access to information, and also the targets and the indicators thereof. The NLSA was able to articulate its mandate, which was very much aligned with the NDP 2020, what we call in South Africa, the future we want, and the responsibility of the Department of Arts and Culture in this space. We have moved this from just South Africa to the region, to the entire uh, African continent. Uh, and our government is the one that has led that through libraries. Um, having about 41 countries now participating, started with 15 countries, now we are at 41 countries uh, where the ministers are um, encouraging one another to make sure that they support libraries in support of the, um, the what we call the Africa that we want. So this is a project that will end up being a project of the um, of Africa rather than just South Africa or you know each individual countries on the African continent. So we are really really excited about our regional activities in terms of the SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rocky. It's very interesting to hear about the engagement uh, with the goals from South Africa and, as you say, into all of Africa. So. Thank you. And so You're Peter, welcome. now, thank you. We'll hear from you, Peter, now on to your response to the question. Yes, uh, maybe I have a couple of examples that I can talk about. But again, you know, there's somebody working in an academic institution, we serve exclusively to our patrons in the university, but still, still there are things we do have some impact on these global communities. For example, there are these social sharing communities, the libraries who scan items when they receive a request from a borrowing institution. 
But there are several of us, when we receive the request, if the item happened to be in public domain, then we scan them and make it open to everyone. When I said everyone, that means everyone who has internet connection. Yet still, there are some inequalities of internet connection, but still those academic resources, whenever possible, our resource sharing librarians community try to make it open as much as possible. And another most recent example that I have, well, when I was doing it, I didn't think about SDG, but that happened somehow related to the several of goals. Maybe most of you remember the explosion happened in Beirut in August this year. It was devastating, you know, tragedy in Beirut. But right after that, I received a request from a colleague in Beirut. She was asking me about asking me for a standard of assessing building stabilities. So after the explosion, a lot of buildings around that area were unstable. So they have to assess the building's safety, so either demolish it or you know make it uh, renovated it or they can repair it. And one of her university professors volunteered for that job of assessing the building stability, but there's an important document that the standard that shows how to assess the building stabilities, which her library did not have. And she was trying to get it, buying it from the publisher, but in the middle of pandemic, and then the publication was almost 20 years old. There's no digital version available. And also, as you may know, the making a payment as public institution to a private company in foreign country is not always easy. So she asked me about that. And using OCLC WordCat, I almost immediately find out, you know, found that who has the item. And then the item happened to be held in a library of which the, I knew the director, who was also a member of the OCAC and also the member of the IPLA community. So what I did was I just called her, hey, this is the situation you, we needed like yesterday. Could you make some arrangement on that? So she was graciously offered the help. And one of her staff went to the library, which I believe was closed and was able to scan the item and send it to the libraries in Beirut. So libraries and the activities that we do can really provide a crucial practical help to our society. So we are, you know, for with this episode, you can see the making partnership and reducing the information inequalities, and also especially the access to the information is a really life and death matter in Beirut at that time. So we are doing these types of works for a long time, as I said earlier, before the SDG has announced. So let's continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, very explicit example of uh, some of the SDGs in action. Um, so the panelists have talked a little bit about the impact and now we're going to shift to a regional focus. Our panelists are from all over the world, and I'm curious, are the SDGs being used by your institutions or adopted at a larger regional or national level? Um, and Rocky has actually already talked a little bit about this as an example, so that is very interesting. We'll hear some more. Um, so if there is this, can you share how this supports or informs your library strategies? So again, let's hear from Rocky. Um, so over to you, Rocky. Thank you very much. Yes, I've already alluded to um, the kind of work that is happening this part of the, uh, the world. Uh, it's no longer an individual library uh, project. It, in South Africa, it's really more country projects that are done in different libraries. Um, I am just going to, you know, talk a little bit about this regional impact that I alluded to earlier. This is something that started in 2015 when um, IFLA was here in South Africa. And uh, we 
we we had a minister spending a whole day talking to his counterparts on the African continent, focusing on the SDG version of the African um, the, 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 of the African continent. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, a framework called the AU 2063, the Africa that we want. So all African countries are focusing on that and seeing how they can, you know, assist to make sure that that 2063 vision is a reality. We were already so involved in South Africa with the ministry and with the libraries, especially the public library sector, I must say. The university libraries sort of didn't find their space that you know that early in the in the in the in, in the work. Um, but as I said, uh, in 2018, um, we invited the African ministers again to South Africa to talk about how they can get involved and support their libraries in more specific things. We wanted to see strong African libraries. We wanted to see a lot of ICT, internet connectivity uh, throughout Africa. And we felt that uh, the ministers were the key because they could support in terms of resources. They could support the libraries to be able to do this thing. So, in 2018, we had a conference with 41 ministers representing 41 African countries. And in 2019, in October last year, you know, the conference was in Ghana where the ministers actually um, sort of worked on what else needed to be included in the declaration. Issues such as local languages, local content were very, very important. And that is why right now we have an AFLIA wide um, project uh, called Wikipedia project where we are going to be working with local content and local languages. But most importantly, the commitment of the ministers in providing the resources and making sure that their countries uh, you know, are really participating in the SDGs, it's, it's, it's really, really critical. But looking at uh, South Africa itself through the National Library as the lead library in the country, there were several um, projects that impacted the country itself. I can just give examples of projects like Mzanzi Online Library that was uh, libraries a project, a project that was funded by global libraries, impacting over 2,000 public libraries with ICT um, uh, and uh, internet connectivity. The Fundam Zanzi project, the annual reading festival co-founded by the Department of Correctional, co-funded by the Department of Correctional Services, reaching over 2,000 people per year in terms of reading. So there are so many projects that are currently going on, even through the uh, pandemic. Uh, yes, the money issues are serious, but people feel that they are so committed to continuing to do this work. And I believe we will have a much bigger regional impact with the projects that uh, we are pushing through. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rocky. And now let us hear from Constance on the same question, regional impact. Well, thanks, thanks, Debbie. Um, I'm only gonna speak from the point of view of the university libraries um, in Australia, um, where we certainly in 2019 had a report, we actually did look at um, what uh, our university libraries were doing uh, to align ourselves to the sustainable development goals. So, although I said earlier, my library personally, um, I, you know, we could do more, but across uh, the country, certainly there has been work done. Um, and we do recognize that our libraries all contribute uh, 
um, you know, in, in uh, building uh, information and digital literacy skills across across um, uh, all our universities for all our students and and um, communities, and um, by uh, engaging in a range of projects to um, reform copyright to make uh, knowledge more openly accessible, um, and and. Uh, trying to work with our institutions to preserve the cultural heritage of um, all our communities and to bring the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, knowledges more to the forefront and, and help preserve that. So we're doing a lot of work in those areas. Um, and we are trying to work more closely. So for example, with our New Zealand colleagues, and uh, with a range of inter international research organizations to strengthen um, our partnerships in those areas to ensure that we, we create better access for all our communities. So there's a lot of work done there in that space. Um, we're looking at um, what we can do to make uh, textbooks and other scholarly resources more open. Again, just trying to make things as accessible as they can be. You know, I, I don't think that I'm saying anything new uh, when I talk about the uh, huge cost of um, textbooks that can be really prohibitive for some of our students. Uh, so working in that space with our with our academic staff and with our researchers to make their uh, the work they create um, openly available. So we do a lot of work in that space and um, are continuing to do that as well. And um, within the Council of Australian University Librarians, we'll be looking at a, a range of projects in the coming years to advocate for that continued uh, fair, affordable and open access to knowledge and continue to build skills across um, all our universities uh, to make sure that you know, we, we can continue to do the best job we can to, to contribute to our communities. Yeah, it's ongoing work. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you, Khan. And now over to Peter for the same question. Thank you. So maybe I will talk about even larger than national level initiative that uh, we started during this COVID time. So in, in April, there were, you know, the European countries already closed and the national, national resource sharing was not working in many part of the world. And meanwhile, the patients, while they are at home, they still need information, they still need the articles and book chapters. So that as the IFLA document delivery resource sharing committee, and we started uh, a small initiative called the resource sharing in the times of COVID. And we set up very simple request forms online and really simple request processing workflow and we asked the volunteers from all over the world. So after seven months now, we have about 120, 130 volunteers from all over the world and requests are coming through this online web form, which I will share the URL later on the chat, but we received over 10,000 requests and 60% of the requests were fulfilled by the libraries around the world by volunteers. It's a free service. And this tells how we can, you know, the information need is always existing, but we have a serious gap of access to information. So as a librarian's law, we provide information and also simple step we can make it. It doesn't, actually, this initiative doesn't require, it, we didn't have a big technical support or anything. But with that small step, you can make some differences. As, as jokingly, but also I meant serious, we are making a world better place to live one article by uh, one article or by chapter by chapter. So you know, even though it looks very small, it doesn't fit to the lofty goal of SDGs, but actually what we are doing, what you all are doing in your library is a, com is a way to accomplish the SDGs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, and thank you to our panelists on sharing your inspirational and diverse examples of how institutions and regional uh, strategies are 
are being developed to address the SDGs. So we've had some excellent discussion so far. Let's take a moment and hear from our attendees. Where do you feel your library's awareness of and use of the SDGs falls on this scale? Are you still very new to the SDGs somewhere in the middle, or are you actively using the SDGs to inform your library strategy? If you will respond to the poll, we will see it live as you are contributing your thoughts on this. And again, the link should be in the chat if you need it. We are seeing new awareness as the primary it looks like. Developing awareness and use is second. There's impactful awareness and use is our third. Uh, it's only at 10%. And active use, as we can see, is only at 2%. So at about 54, 55%, most of the participants are um, expressing new awareness to the SDG. So that is very interesting. And hopefully then this conversation is being very useful to introduce them a little further. So thank you very much for contributing to the poll. As an OCLC Global Council Library, as OCLC Global Council Library leaders, what closing thoughts do you have about how libraries can work together to help our world achieve these goals. Do you have any reactions to the previous poll? Let's start with Constance. Thanks, Debbie. Um, I think forums like these are amazing ways of, you know, bringing us together to start thinking about what we should be doing or could be doing. Um, and I, I think um, at our local and regional levels, uh, we need, we can be talking more about how we can use the goals to frame some of our projects that we're already working on um, to bring them more to the forefront at, at a political level. I think that that would be a great way to start. Thanks for that. Thanks, Khan. And next we'll go to Peter. What are your thoughts about this? Yes. Uh, this will provide us a nearly important, a useful tool to promote what we do or get maybe ask more help or more support of, on what we are doing now. And again, this is sounds like lofty goals, but it is not. It is really related to your daily, day-to-day -day work. So let's use it skillfully so that we can get more support for the library. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. And over to you, Rocky, for your last thought. Well, thank you very much. Um, I will go back to what I just said a little while ago, that I believe that um, um, the uh, SDGs are really providing a, a great opportunity, especially for, for um, developing countries. Um, so, I think just thinking that maybe it's, it's not something that important or you don't know exactly where to start or what to do next. I have one, two, three, four, five, like five things that I'm going to suggest to people to do in order to get started. Number one, just become familiar with the SDGs. Do a read up about them, you know, the goals themselves, the targets and the indicators and know what your country's NDP 2030 is all about. What does your country say they will do? And see if you can align your library priorities with the government national development plan. Because once you can be able to do that, number one, you will see the relevance that your libraries are playing in your communities and your countries. And then participate in your regional network programs aligned with the IFLA programs on SDGs. Join the IFLA map of the world. Make sure that your library is part of that because you will begin to participate not only uh, at home, but regionally and globally too. Thank you very much, Debbie. 
Thank you, Rocky, and um, your points for how to get uh, started in learning more and working with the SDGs. And thank you to our panelists. I want to thank uh, our guest speaker, of course, Barbara Lisson, to, and to all of our panelists, Peter, Rocky, and Constant, and um, everyone who's joined us today and participated in today's event. This has been a wonderful conversation, and we hope you've gained some valuable insights. Before we close today, I have some announcements I'd like to share. First, please mark your calendar for the next webinar in our series, Start on Your Sustainability Goals Today. It will take place on December 8th of this year. You can learn more and register using the link shown on the screen and being shared in chat. We'd like to have all of you share your perspectives with us through our Global Library Survey on the SDGs. This survey is a partnership between OCLC Global Council and OCLC Research. It's open now through January 31 of 2021 and is open for all library types and sizes to participate. Results of this global survey will be published in June 2021. So please take a copy of that link and submit your responses. We really, really need your um, involvement in collecting that data. And finally, thank you again for joining us today. We've linked to a brief evaluation in the chat. Please take a few moments to share your thoughts about today's session with us. We look forward to seeing you at our next webinar on December 8th. And finally, good morning 